Hello, everyone. My name is Giulia Barbareschi, and today, on behalf of my co-author, I'm very happy to uh, present to you our paper called Speech is Silver, Silence is Golden, Analyzing Micro-Communication Strategies Between Visually Impaired Runners and Their Guides. Visually impaired individuals often face difficulties engaging in sporting and recreational activities due to a combination of factors that range from personal circumstances to social and environmental barriers. Amongst various sports, running is one of the most popular for visually impaired individuals. This is due to their relatively low barriers to entry, including the fact that it's reasonably cheap, it can be practiced in um, many locations that does not require specific sporting facilities or equipment, and can be enjoyed with other people. In guided running, a visually impaired individual, it's usually accompanied by a sighted guide that runs alongside them. While this is not necessary, the majority of people prefer to have a physical connection with the guide. And the options are holding hand or uh, for the runners to hold the elbow of the guide. Many people don't necessarily like this because it impacts their ability to swing their arm as they run. So the most popular solution is actually the use of a rope tether um, that is looped together and held in one hand by the runner and the other hand by the guide. When guides and visually impaired runners run together, there are a series of instructions that the guide is supposed to give to the runner um, to communicate what is going to happen. Um, the most common of this are left and right turn in which the guide will give a vocal command to the runner, usually slightly ahead of when a turn is expected. It will move in position either a little bit forward um, to facilitate turn and will gently pull the tread in one direction um, to communicate how, how, when the turn is happening. And other things that can happen is that there might be a slight obstacle or a pothole on the ground, in which case the guide has to communicate to the runner that they need to steer to one side of the path. This is communicated usually with a verbal command and a much more gentler pull to the tread to lead the runner uh, in the desired side of the road. If obstacles are approaching or uh, the pair is getting into a crowded area, the guide might ask the runner to slow down. This is generally communicated by voice and it's often accompanied by the reason why the pair needs to slow down. And the guide will also drop the speed slightly, finding themselves uh, generally a little bit behind of the runner to reinforce and the command. The tread is also gently pulled backwards to communicate the intention to slow down. Um, we collaborated with a volunteering organization that organizes running events with volunteer guides in Tokyo for both a uh, novice and expert runner. And we worked together with 12 participants, so six pairs of runners and guides. We conducted video recording of these running sections um, and applied interaction analysis to understand the exchange that occur um, during the run between the pairs and try to break down the communication strategies as they happen and when they were applied. Um, we also conducted uh, post-running interviews with these diets of participants to understand more broadly what their running experience had just been in this particular occasion, but also more generally, and also what their preferences and priorities were when guiding or receiving um, guidance during runs. Our analysis reviewed a complex um, series of strategies that these pairs applied in situ that incorporated two different modalities of commands. One were vocal command and the other one were corporeal commands. Vocal commands were broadly split in three categories. The most 
common one was directive commands. These were primarily given by the guide to the runner and indicated some of the commands that we've seen previously. For example, indication about the needing to turn or the fact that obstacles were present on the path and the pair needed to change um, stride. However, runners could also occasionally give vocal command. This was especially common when um, runners were more expert and uh, perhaps um, were training for specific events. In this case, the directive command were primarily focused on regulating the pace of the run, such as increasing it to increase the performance uh, or perhaps decreasing uh, the pace of the run when one was getting tired. Another type of vocal exchanges that occur were contextual exchanges. These were characterized by the fact that they were primarily geared at describing what was happening around the pair. Um, we, as we observed um, these running events in a non-competitive environment, these had largely to do with description of the surrounding environments that the guide would try to provide to the runner to increase the appreciation of the um, experience. But the runners also contributed to this um, by relying on their auditory sensing or their embodied perception to talk about, for example, noise that were appearing that could spark conversations about what was um, going on around it. Another type of contextual conversations that we did not observe, but was reported to us, was what happens in the context of racing events, where one of the responsibility of the guide is also to provide information about the status of the other competitors, where people are in the overall ranking, and perhaps um, how much time uh, or distance is remaining before the completion of the track. Finally, the last type of vocal exchanges that we recorded were recreational uh, conversations. These were equally distributed between runners and guides, were very common between peers that had either more confidence with each other um, or even that had more confidence with themselves. So expert runners and guide that maybe did not have much previous experience running together, but were reasonably comfortable on their skills, uh, will engage in this type of um, conversation a lot. And this was one of the things that uh, when I reported in the experience, uh, especially by the visually impaired runner, together with contextual communication, was what really set apart uh, guides that were described as being more competent and more enjoyable to run with versus the one that were more novice and will primarily sort of focus on directive commands that were specifically important um, only for safety reason. But the communication that takes place, it's not just vocal, but it also engaged embodied corporeal exchanges. And these can be of two types. There are corporeal interactions that are intentional. And these, for the guide, largely relates to the signals that we have seen that needs to be given for communication, slightly gently pull the tether um, to move away from a patch of rough terrain um, or uh, indicating a turn in one direction. However, runners themselves also leverage intentional um, corporeal communications um, occasionally in a similar way in which they leverage directive vocal communication. So they might gently hold the tether back to indicating that they wanted to slow the pace or perhaps moving slightly forward and pulling the tether with them to indicate that they wanted to pick up the pace and go faster. Another type of corporeal communication that we observed was instead unintentional. And this occurred in equal measures 
um, between runner and guide. But the group in which was perhaps the most common was the one of most novice guides. And this would happen a lot when people would tend to focus on trying to match the step and the arm swing of the runner. Um, but this will end up uh, getting in the way as their arms will get uh, too rigid and they would actually be transmitted as an extremely unpleasant experience to their partner. Runners also occasionally engage in unintentional corporeal communication. And this, once again, often happened when they were tensing up um, for things that might make them nervous, such as a, a vehicle approaching or a sound that they struggle to identify. A final type of communication that um, we observed and was reported um, to us uh, by these pairs. It was that occasionally what we could see was a pair simply running together with the tread gently bobbing between them. Nobody seemed to engage in any type of vocal or corporeal communication at any time. This is what uh, the runners indicated to us as the equivalent of a moment of companionable silence. Um, where the pair trusted each other implicitly, could simply enjoy the run together and uh, um, did not feel that there was any need to communicate anything. Based on our findings, we developed recommendations for three potential avenues in which technology could support runners and guides in their practice. Um, the first one is support in training. This is primarily directed at guides, especially novice guides, and it could provide a way to understand how they could use the various commands in a more effective manner. Um, it could also help to limit unintentional corporeal communication and decrease stiffness in the arm. And it could be implemented as, for example, um, eSport or XR technologies that would allow a guide to be paired with a phantom runner. Another possible avenue for technology is the one of in situ augmentation. In this regard, technology could help communicate orientation and gaze direction to facilitate contextual awareness. This match what has been observed before when it comes to negotiation and collaboration in um, guided navigation beyond running itself. But in situ augmentation could also allow people to become more aware of the corporeal communication that they're sending intentionally and unintentionally, and also how is it received by the other party. Finally, another avenue for technologies is the one of post-run feedback. One of the things that we observed is that the communication that occurred during the run was extremely rich, but there was actually very little communication that occurred after the run between the runners and guides. Um, this limit the ability of making complex exchanges and perhaps the runners and guide only exchanged a few words to communicate their needs. Um, but being able to go over the run, again, my favor, more complex exchanges and help people to reflect um, on where they want to improve in less stressful situations. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have questions, feel free to reach out and you can find your, our paper on the conference proceedings. Thank you.